Hello and welcome to Extra Time with me, Gary James, and guest. Here we go, here's a long list. Broadcaster, radio DJ and football stadium announcer and probably loads of other things as well. Paul Burrell, Paul, welcome. Well, they haven't caught up with me with the other no. things, but yeah. <laughs> nice to be back, Gary. Nice uh, to see uh, you. Thanks, yeah. for, thanks for coming on, mate. Uh, Paul, before we have a chat, uh, I'd just like to say, if you have any suggestions for guests you'd like to see on the show or tell us about your sport, if we're not talking about it, then please let us know. Email extratime at bigcentre.tv. Right. Mr. Burrell, sir. Well, last time I saw you, it was a bit sad, wasn't it? Wembley with uh, the Saddlers. Yeah, they didn't were. really turn up, did they, Gary? They no. didn't really turn up. No. But uh, a great day. It was. It was a fantastic mm. day for for all the fans. And of course, one of your jobs is stadium announcer. Mm. Um, and before we talk about that again, let me just take you back because um, you're stadium announcer. You've you've been involved in sport for a number of years. Mm -hmm. But when when did it all start for you? Were you were you a mad footballer at school? You thought you were going to be a footballer for a living? Football to and tennis living? has always been a big thing for me. Football yeah. and tennis. Played to county level at football. Um, always played for a tennis club and that sort of stuff. But when you when you leave school, you get to the real world, don't you? Unless you're lucky enough to like, yeah. like these lads and girls working in TV straight yeah. away. But and. Um, I was about 29, 30 until I got involved with commercial radio. But you always strive to, 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 to if you're working at something you really enjoy, then you are a lucky person. And I would guess there's about 10% of us doing that, aren't we? You know? Yeah, yeah. And, and coming full on, um, you, you started at uh, stadium announcing. Was Arsenal the first stadium you did? Or Arsenal did was the first one, uh, 1991 that was, yeah. until now. I'm still there, I'll be at Wembley tomorrow. Uh, sorry, on Saturday, Saturday um, for the Arsenal Reading game. Just yeah. sort of oh. doing that. You're not allowed to actually do the the full gig because you're supposed to be impartial. Uh, but myself and the Reading guy will be on the pitch with the respective mascots, mm. uh, the young kids, and whipping them up. And it's good, good fun. Yeah, well, I think we had um, Jack Woodward for Aston Villa mm -hmm. on the other day, and I think yeah, he's yeah. doing the same on Sunday for Villa. God, he can talk. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he was using some long words, hadn't he? Oh, yeah, yeah. he's, he's a great commentator, he's Jack, yeah, and we've sure. both been lucky enough to work with him as well. Well, I was, worked in him, with him from 2001 at Villa, and that's when I first met you. You were yeah. working at Derby County, yeah. doing the breakfast show at the Ram, yeah. Yeah. and it was a shame that that concept didn't make it. I mean, for 18 months, it was tremendous, and we were getting great feedback from uh, Chelsea Football Club, yeah. Southampton, Southampton, Villa and Derby, yeah. and still got some good friends like Jack now yeah. from those days. Yeah. Yeah. No, we yeah. haven't. They've all, they've all gone on. To, to good things. bigger and better mm -hmm. things. We've mm -hmm. all sort of mm -hmm. stayed in touch and stayed in the business. And apart from the, the broadcasting side of the media work, I know you, you work a lot with Neil Reoch and, and do the, yeah. uh, the, the charity and the Villa Golf Days and stuff. So how, how, how did that all come about and how's that going? That came about um, through um, the villain. Yeah. I, I asked Neil for Bruce Reoch's phone number uh, to comment on something. I think it was when John Gregory was sacked. Yeah. Uh, something the Villa anyway, um, ended up talking to Neil on the phone. I'd never met him before for about an hour. Had lots, lots in common. He's a great guy for, for, for charity work, particularly the, um, the welfare of former footballers. Mm. The people that missed the gravy train, like the Peter McParlins, who scored two goals in the FA Cup final for yeah. Villa back in 57. 57 yeah. Those sort of players. And a lot of people don't realise that, and these players that play now will never need that situation mm. um, if they've got half a brain, yeah, yeah. of course. Uh, but... We've had to supply bathrooms and showers for, for, for um, former players because they've got no money. Yeah. Uh, I, well, it's a bit like linked to, in fact, I, hopefully he's coming on the show, um, which will be this next Monday, um, is Jeff Scott, who runs Jeff's um, a great X Pro. Yeah. yeah he's, uh, he's had his uh, health issues. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, but, um, but it's the same great, thing, yeah, yeah. So you're having the golf days to, to raise money to That's to right, yeah. Them. And, and it's a great social for the lads, I mean, because... You know, once once you finish playing football, it's a big void for a lot of people mm. because they go from school to football and they're never really, and this is no disrespect, they're never really in the real world. Yeah. I mean, I remember going to a European game with, um, with the Arsenal in 1994 and Kevin Campbell and Chris Kawamia, who had just signed from Ipswich, they were in front of me and my dad in the, in the queue at um, Gatwick Airport. Mm. And uh, all of a sudden, Kawamia went, oh! I've got to go to cash point. I said, why? I said, well, I've got no money on me. He said, what do you need money for? And he said, well, I always like to have a few quid on me. Oh, we don't, we don't spend any money on these trips. You, you don't need money. They do everything. And I thought, well, that in a <laughs> nutshell, 
that is it. That's it's it. quite frightening, really. Yeah, mm. yeah. Like you say, it, it is a shame because sometimes we don't, we forget, and we don't realise as fans that they're just normal people, and if they haven't been looked after properly mm. and haven't been given the right advice, they they do leave with. With nothing, don't they? You know. Well, some of the, the tales that Neil tells, some, some of these lads, they wouldn't know how to... Um, well, you're talking about Raheem Sterling lately. He, he's been, just been done for no uh, insurance on his car yeah. because he didn't have the know, know-how didn't to know. go and sort it out on, on, no. online, online or whatever. Mm. Yeah, because it's, it's like these the concierge-type yeah. services that yeah. the clubs pull in. They do all the work for them, don't That's they? Right. You know, pay, pay the gas bills, pay the electricity bill. Yeah. It's a bit like you here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Where's my makeup girl? <laughs> so let's 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 talk about the um, the game on on Sunday then, Paul. Mm, it, it's, it's a big one for exciting for Villa. For Villa. Uh, they were last at, 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 in a cup final at Wembley in two thousand, wasn't it? I think that was the last um, FA Cup at the old Wembley. Yeah. And once again, like Warsaw, Villa didn't really turn up, no. uh, and they lost that too. I don't know. The last time they actually won something it was the Coca Cola Cup, nineteen ninety four. I think that 94, was ninety four. That was when, great, and they, uh, they they won it in ninety six as well yeah. when Savo scored that brilliant goal. So Villa are no strangers to Wembley Stadium and Tim Sherwood has put a breath of fresh air into the club. I mean, had a bit of a shaky start and that fantastic win at Tottenham last week looks like it could be the turning point. But they're not out of danger yet, Gary, but it's looking better. Yeah, I mean, they are. They, they still need one, maybe two wins. It depends mm. a lot. It's an interesting season this, this year, isn't it? It's a weird this season. season. This, this yeah, they're 14, 15 season. They're dragging the baggies down now yeah. and also Newcastle got to watch what they're doing. Mm. Um, but... That's that's exciting, but you look at the top of the, um, the championship, and that's mm. unbelievable. I, I maybe mean, if we get a chance, we'll come back to that in a sec. But um, Villa, uh, Liverpool, um, they haven't got a bad record against Liverpool, have they? They're not scared of Liverpool. No. They've always done well against Liverpool. It's it's a tough one, but I think it's better that they had Liverpool than possibly Blackburn, who Liverpool beat in the uh, yeah. in the quarter final, because there's no way they're going to underestimate uh, Liverpool and. Game on, best team. Yes. It is, and, and Liverpool are not not too good at the moment. They've gone through a bit of a yeah, dodgy patch. Yeah, they've gone through a dodgy patch. They've they've picked up a, a nice result against um, Newcastle at the mm. beginning of the week, so they'll be ready to go. Mm. And everybody's saying, "Oh, Sturridge won't play." I'll I'll be amazed if Sturridge is mm. not playing. Yeah, I think he'll be playing his, his mm. best side. Mm. Yeah, mm. because unlike Villa, Liverpool. And they haven't got much else to, to play for, really, have they this season? Well, they're, they're only four points behind Man City now, so. Who they knows? Can still, yeah. They can still just yeah. yeah. Pick where, where into Villa, obviously, they, 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 they still need that survival, and it's mm. one of the things I think we spoke about it when we were talking about about Warsaw and Wembley. It is it's great that Villa get to play in the semi final. Um, it'll be great if they win for the Midlands. Mm. And, and they get to the final, sure. and who knows, maybe, maybe win, win the trophy. Mm. Great for Midlands mm. football. It annoys me a little bit whether the club's fans and supporters sort of want them to lose. I, I, can't, I never really saw the logic mm. of that. Oh. You know, we should all get behind Midlands mm. teams if there's only one of us in, in that position. Yeah, I've got um, that. So, so it'd be interesting to see um, if any of the lads may be in their minds thinking, you know... Um, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Uh, after after the semi final, if they do get through, um, will they be backing off a little bit because they want well, to be a place think, in the final? Or yeah, I understand what you're saying, Gary, but I just think getting to the semi final it clears their minds of that relegation battle. They can play with a certain amount of freedom, and it's a bit of glory. I mean, it's a lot of glory. If you get to the FA Cup final, wow, you talk about that till you die in day, and it's as simple as that: win or lose. So it is a big deal, and I think they can go out there and hopefully play with the shackles gone of mm-hmm. this relegation battle, which has been affecting them, of course, and everybody else is down there, and, and take on Liverpool on an even keel. Mm. And going back years for, for the FA Cup, um, it used to be that the, 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 the semis were played at, at their mm. own grounds, wasn't it? All, all and still should uh, be, I and think. I think, yeah. Joe, I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. Do you think it's right? It's all about that. It's, it's all about Wembley. Wembley pulling back as much money mm. as they can. They've already said it, it'll always be at Wembley, so we've got to get used to that. But when you talk about Villa against Liverpool, that should be at Old Trafford. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Both geographically and for the fact more Villa and Liverpool fans will get to see it because we all know the, about the corporate monster at Wembley. You know, you get 31,000 fans e- uh, tickets each, so that's 62, and there's about another 28 that just go to people that possibly aren't even interested in those two yeah. teams. Yeah. Well, mate, definitely. It, it is, and you say it'll, it'll never change now, will it? I wouldn't have thought yeah. so. I wouldn't have thought no. so. No. no. And, and um, there's been things in the papers, and we've got some stuff here um, about, about the Villa side, and um, Dave James 
He's, uh, of course, a former uh, player for both clubs, Liverpool That's and, right, yeah. and, and yeah. Uh, thinking that, um, you know, talking about which goalkeeper um, they, should, um, they, they should go with uh, at the weekend. Um, and he's saying that, you know, Shea's here to, he's here to stay. Um, so let's talk more about that and what's in the papers um, in, the, in the second half. Okay. But for now, thank you. OK, uh, that half-time whistle is, is, about to, uh, is about to blow. We're going to take a break in, in a minute. Um, but again, if we're not talking about your sport, then please get in touch with us. Or if you've got suggestions of a guest you'd like to see on the sofa on Extra Time, then please get in touch. The email is extratime at bigcentre.tv. But for now, Paul and myself, we're going to go and suck on half an orange. It's half time on Extra Time. See you in a bit. Hello and welcome to the second half of Extra Time. I'm Gary James with guest broadcaster Paul Burrell. So Paul, before the break, um, we were just mentioning that in the papers today, um, uh, former goalkeeper for both Villa and um, Liverpool, David James. And everybody else. And everybody else, yeah, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. the jobbing goalkeeper. Yeah. Um, uh, saying that Shay's here to stay. Uh, Shay Given um, versus Brad Gusand. I mean, like you, you said that, that Shea's been in, brought back into the team when Tim came in. Well, what, the, what do you reckon? What these managers do, and for the last 10 years they've done, if you've got a reserve team goalkeeper, in the old days, it, you were the reserve and that was it. But they'll play them in the League Cup and, and the FA Cup now. So Shea has played all of the games so far, so it'll be a bit of a shocker if he misses out on a Wembley game, I would have mm -hmm. thought. Particularly a man of his pedigree. I mean, he's 38 years old now, but he's still first choice for uh, Roy Keane and uh, Martin O'Neill in the Republic of Ireland team. Mm -hmm. So this time next year, he'll be looking forward, hopefully, to the 2016 European Championship. So he's, he's not a spent force, Shea Given. Mm -hmm. And out of all the years I've worked at Highbury and also Emirates, without doubt, the best visiting goalkeeper we've ever mm. seen there was Shea, predominantly in his Newcastle United uh, days. And as you say, 38, it seems to be a thing, certainly with Villa goalkeepers, they seem to play uh, you know, in the late 30s, yeah. don't they? If you yeah. look at, um, um, he's, and he's gone to Tottenham now, uh, Friedel, Brad Friedel. Yeah, 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 I think he was, was he 40 or something like that when he yeah, finished playing? and John Burridge, back, back in the day as well, played to the late 30s, early 40s as well. Mm. Mm. Affectionately known as the flying pig. So how much do you think Villa now for Sunday are going to rely on Benteke? Is it, are they a one-player team? Ben, no, not at all. Not at all. Ben, I mean, Benteke is a cracking player, and he's and fortunately for Villa, he's coming back into form. But no, no, no not at all. The, the inspiration of uh, Ron Vlaar, people like Shea Given who have been there and done it. No, they will not be shrinking violets at Wembley. No mm. way. Mm. Okay, so. Your forecast for Sunday, what do you reckon? I think Villa can do it. I think Villa can do it, you know, by the odd goal. Mm. Yeah. And you were there on Saturday with Arsenal. Yeah. On paper. Yeah, Arsenal. but football, as they say, is not played on paper. I mean, this has been the craziest FA Cup season. Chelsea yeah. 2, Bradford City 4 yeah. at Stamford Bridge with Chelsea 2-0 up. Yeah. Unreal. <laughs> Possibly, arguably, the biggest shock ever. Yeah. I mean, if you're a Reading fan today, you, you are looking forward to that weekend. And Steve Clark, he's a winner, former Chelsea gaffer yep. and also Liverpool. He's an absolute winner. It won't, be, it won't be easy, but it'll be a major shock if Arsenal don't go through. Mm -hmm. But what a great final, Villa and Reading. Incredible, wouldn't it? Oh, incredible. <laughs> it would be. It would be fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. Mm -hmm. And, and um, FA Cup... Um, it, it always brings up people's various superstitions, rituals. In, in your time in the in, in the game and the, and the players that you know, that is, is there any anybody you can think of or a couple of players that have got strange superstitions before a game? Not necessarily the FA Cup, but before any game or any rituals they go through. Well, that... before Arsene Wenger came to Arsenal, the big superstition. Well, it wasn't a superstition. Everybody was in the pub, <laughs> but um, that's completely changed. He got rid of the, the players' bar and, and, and changed their diets, and, and the rest is history. They, be, they all became better <laughs> players. But um, maybe a few of the characters are, are going out of the game. Yeah. I'm not so sure about su uh, superstitions before the game, um, but I, I think if you it, say you, you, you're at a, a, a particular hotel before a big game and you win that well, a lot of teams go back to what they call well, their lucky hotel. Yeah, they do. I know mm. a lot of the managers. Mm. When the, the visiting teams come into Birmingham, mm. there's, there's three or four hotels that, you know, as you say, the managers like that hotel, mm. you know, and, mm. and that's that every time. 
And um, and it's it, the shame because the hotels hate it if a manager leaves because yeah. <laughs> incoming manager might like a different mm. hotel. They are oh, in a regular business out, uh, out out of the window. Um, so okay, so you're you're going for a Villa win. I think I'm going for a Villa win as well. Yeah, I think it's going to be on, close. On, on Sunday. I think it'll be a, gr a great game. And yeah, Arsenal Reading. I can't call it at the moment. Um, well, I can. I, I think it's going to be Arsenal. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yes. But, but like you say, it, 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 no disrespect to anybody. You know. Okay. Mm. And, and just just briefly um, on our other sides now, um, uh, uh, the baggies, they still need a, a win or two, don't they? That, well, that's... We, we sat here about three weeks ago, didn't we? Yeah. And talked about the relegation battle, and we didn't even mention West Brom. No. We mentioned. Well, I mentioned that Leicester might still get out of it and everybody looked at me like I was a weirdo but they might still get out of it might not still get out of it but they've got five home games Gary out of six games hmm. yeah. it's in their hands and, 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 and the Albion are being sucked into it I can't imagine Tony Pulis allowing that to happen I really yeah. can't yeah. but they've just lost two home games on the spin and everything changes yeah mm. yeah so I mean we hope so and also um, coming on to Wolves they had a purple patch. Another team that just lost and two on the spin. Two on the spin. And all of a sudden, they're three points adrift of the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Wolves and Brentford are looking like the two that could miss out. So they really have got to put one over their old boss mm. this weekend. Yeah. Wolves are playing, well, playing Ipswich. Ipswich, 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 Ipswich what, what McCarthy back at the Molyneux. Norwich are playing Bournemouth tomorrow. Yeah. Um, Middlesbrough yeah. tomorrow. Another yeah. great game. Yeah. 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 yeah it It'd be interesting to see if, if, if sparks will fly when... Uh, when Mick comes back to, to the Molyneux well, on, on Saturday. Well, that's an absolute given, isn't it? it, it it's, no it's, no it, pun oh, intended. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. And, um, but I think, I, think the, I think the Wolves fans, they, they, they liked Mick, I think, didn't they? they Mick they, was great there. And great it, guy. it was ridiculous. I mean, Steve Morgan's done a great job there, but he made a big mistake then. It was on the back of Wolves uh, losing at home 5-1 mm. against yeah. West Brom, of, of all people. And he was on a skiing holiday, and he, he sacked him from there. And I'm thinking... Hang on, that was just a knee-jerk reaction. You yeah. know, you, you got to you got to look at all all aspects mm. of it, and I think Wolves' loss was Ipswich Town's gain. Mm. Mm. And onto the Blues, you know. And yeah, no, I mean they're there's... on the beach now, aren't they? Virtually, really. Yeah, I mean. But when I, you I, look at it, when Gary Rarit took over, they weren't going on the beach. They were going down to they, League they One. Were, yeah, yeah. So they, he's they done were. a superb job, and it'll be interesting to see that. I think there'll be a lot of players leave St Andrews in the, in, in the summer. And he'll bring his, his own two or three players that he hasn't been able to bring in yet. And I think it'll be a much um, uh, more streamlined squad. Mm. And I mean, because people think are saying that he, he desperately needs a, a really a, a good ball playing midfielder, doesn't he? Yeah, doesn't everybody? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, know, I know what you mean. I know yeah, but I think that's yeah. what it means. And, and I was, I was uh, in the last couple of games, and um, this new lad, well, he's, I think he's come from Watford on low. Oh, Fab, Fabrini. Fab, yeah, yeah, yeah. What a player. Mm. You know, I, I, you but know. he can't play on Saturday for obvious reasons because they're playing Watford. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, mm. so it's a, it's a shame. But but he, I think, you know, everybody was saying, "Where's mm. he come from?" Mm. It was great. But the thing is, Gary, don't you think? Unless he's had a big fallout with someone down there, if Watford get to the playoffs and if Watford go up, he's not going to all, all respect to Blues. He's not going to stay around here. No, no, no. He's going to go to Premier League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, he bound to, isn't he? On yeah. that, in that. But great and, uh, to see a player like that. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the, it's all going to be in the next few weeks. It's the the, the rumor mill is going to start, and the talking is going to start about mm. who's going, who's staying. I think you'll you stay. You're doing a great job, Gary. Yeah. Um, thank you very much. Have a word with the boss on the way out, will you? Um, and and coming coming back to, back to yourself and one of the other clubs that you you're passionate about and you you work with uh, as a stadium announcer and help out, of course, is Chase Town. Yeah, and that, that's, that's what football's all about, Chase Town. Well, so not, not just Chase Town, so, so but non-league non football. Yeah, you know, they don't go down like they've been shot by a sniper or, or what mm. have you. Uh, however, if you watch the ladies' game, that's even more sporting and so skillful these days. W women's football, I mean, is here to stay. It really yep. is. But just going back to Chase Town, yep. uh, Chase Town uh, have got through to the final of the Warsaw Senior Cup. They won it last year, but they're actually playing Warsaw FC in the final, which will be interesting because Warsaw have played their youth team all the way through because they're playing against non-league yeah. opposition. Yeah. But be interesting to see um, if Dean puts a couple of more experienced players in because they won't want to lose that at Banksy Stadium against Chase Town. And Chase Town and Warsaw are like that. When yeah. Warsaw had their fantastic um, um, Chase Town, their fantastic FA Cup runs, Warsaw gave Chase Town all of their stewards for the Cardiff game. Wow. You know, didn't charge them. Yeah. 
you yeah. know, because there's 2,000 people there instead of 200 people. Mm. So they've got a great uh, relationship and they've just confirmed a pre-season friendly at Chase Town at the end of July. So Warsaw, uh, uh, Chase Town are a Warsaw team at the end mm. of the day. So hopefully in the next couple of weeks, maybe you can get the two clubs well, together. Try and get, get yeah, good people great, on. Yeah. And, um, it's, uh, that'd be great fun, yeah. And it, it'll be good. And it's, mm. uh, you know, sort of, sort of a, well, it's, it's a derby and it's a local yeah, derby. Of course, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it'll be, 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 yeah. be fantastic. Yeah. So, and, and plans for you for the future? So doing what you do? Or? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm lucky. I've been, I've been at Wembley nearly 20 years now and there's lots going on there. And there's, there's a little carrot sort of dangling for the Olympic Stadium at uh, Stratford. Um, yeah. Where West Ham are taking over there. Yeah. Well, they're going to be drop parachutes in on a Saturday, then going away. They won't. They'll have. It won't be like a home for West Ham. It's just a business thing, which I think is pretty strange. If I was a West Ham fan, I'd I'd rather stay at Upton Park. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But um, there's 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 half a shout of doing some stuff um, there uh, on the microphone, which oh, would be exciting because uh, Wembley Emirates and and the Olympic Stadium that that'd be nice on your CV. But more importantly, it's just better than working. <laughs> and you'll be buying a pad in London soon. No, yeah. no I'm not on your money. That, that's a book yeah, from, yeah. from Birmingham to London. Yeah, that'll be Paul good. Yeah. Listen, mate, it's been a pleasure. Uh, as always, thanks Gary, for good coming to see on. We well, know you're coming on again as part of the extra extra time team. Um, so uh, you know, let's let's hope that, that Villa can do it on Sunday. Yeah, absolutely. Let's really hope they can they can they can get through. And uh, I, you know, I, I think Villa Villa Reading final would be fantastic, or just Villa in the final would be brilliant. And let's hope all the supporters in the Midlands get behind. See, it. now you said Villa Reading, it's going to be Arsenal Liverpool. You know <laughs> that, Gary. You know that. All right. Well, thanks again, mate. Um, so uh, once again, if we're not talking about your sport or you've got any suggestions for guests, please email us. Extra time at bigcentre.tv. But that's it. It's full time and extra time. Bye bye.